Hey there everyone, this is Chef MKT, and welcome back to Let's Play Toho Card Monsters! Where's the patchouli mouse cursor? There you are, you sneaky little snake you! Alright, so where we last left off, we were done with the Yokai Mountain, for the most part. All we need to do is take over the Moria water bottle factory, and claim Suwako for ourselves. Alright, Ramu, let's do this. Okay, so just a little word of warning, I did a lot of grinding off screen. A little bit too much, even for my taste. So this grinding summary may take around 10 minutes or so. 10 minutes or so. so uh, hopefully you have some sort of snack ready, or you can just skip to the boss fight. Either way, it's up to you. Alright, so let's take a look here. First set of monsters. Take a look at Mr. Blobman. We're looking at transformation number 6. So three transformation badges the Fate Badge and the Magic Attack Badge. So the Fate Badge, for those of you who do not recall, is the badge we found in Yorkai Mountain that increases evasion and accuracy. Okay, so let's take a look at the transformation here. Oh, duh. <laughs> That's a dual badge. This is the Fate Badge. There, yeah, much better. Wow. And I thought I was fully prepared to do this video. Apparently not. Well, what you're going to do? It's not like I'm going to try to re-record this. Anywho, this little dude has heal and starlight web. Other than that, it's not that interesting at all. Okay, moving on. Moving on, moving on, moving on. Okay. Swordsman guy, transformation number six, three transformation badges, the fate badge, plus the highest leveled plus attack badge, gives you this guy, Dante. Yeah. So this guy's pretty cool. It has 55 base move speed. So, if you may or may not have noticed by now, a lot of the monsters in this game have a base move speed of 50. So this guy should be able to attack first most of the time. The other thing is that it has almost 300 attack power, and it has a very powerful single target spear move, which I will show you probably in the next area, because this guy is really cool. Alright, moving on. Terra Feet. Okay, so we're looking at transformation number 3. It requires 3 transformation badges the highest level strength badge and the jewel badge. So, you probably remember this guy from Genso Moroku. Caused me a lot of problems. Let's just not get into that situation there. Okay, so once again, this guy is also pretty good because it has 300 base attack power, has a wide variety of blunt attacks you can abuse, and a buff that actually increases your resistance against the uh, free weapon types in the game. So that's kind of cool. It's kind of cool, but not necessary. Okay, moves on. Boopity 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 boop. Harpy dude. We're looking at transformation number three, so it requires three transformation badges, the status resist badge, which is this guy up here, and the gout badge, which gives you plus speed, is down here. Boop. So we saw this guy in Yorkai Mountain. What does it have? Not really all that much. So it's not that interesting. It does have 70 base move speed though, and has pretty high evasion, so that is something I suppose. Moving on, Snake Dude, uh, we're looking at transformation number 5, so it requires 3 transformation badges in a line, plus 2 jewel badges. This is the Neo Carbuncle, we saw this guy in Yorkai Mountain, it has um, Reflection, Elemental Barrier, Control Land, you know, it has unique, uh, unique buffs. Alright, so that's that guy done, and finally we have the Computer Chip guy. Uh, let's see, we're looking at transformation number 5 first, the B30. It requires three transformation badges, the status resist badge, and the instant death resist badge. That's the B30 there, not really that interesting to be quite honest. And then transformation number 6 is the X25. It is just two instant death resist badges. There we go. A little bit more interesting, has hard drive crash, and some mystic elemental base attacks. Both physical and magical. Alright, that's the first half done, let's look at the second half, which is a little bit more interesting. Uh, switch, and tuning. Okay, Fish Guy, we're looking at first looking at transformation number 6. Okay, so all you need is um, three transformation badges, any lightning badge, it could be the lowest level if you want, and the highest level to magic attack badge. Boopie boopie boo, we got ourselves an upgraded ribbon fish most interesting part about this guy is that it has an upgraded version of the 100 megavolt attack where, and this is a full screen this variant so it does exactly the exact same thing as 100 megavolts but it's full screen 
Next, it has the upgraded version of the Thunder Breath Attack, which is this thing here. But it costs us like 40 MP though, so it's a little bit expensive. Alright, moving on, we have the Plant Dude. Looking at transformation number 6. It requires 3 transformation badges, the highest level to life badge, and the instant death resistor badge. So we got ourselves a little blue flower dude here. I think we saw this in your kind mountain. It has raised dead. That's about it. Moving on. Third guy here. Transformation number one. Two transformation badges, instant death resistor badge, and the medium level dark badge. Whoop! It transforms into Elephant Man. Why does a bird transform into Elephant Man? I honestly don't know. That's how evolution works in this world. Okay, transformation number two. It requires two medium level strength badges and two transformation badges. Alright, so we have the giant dude here, and what I really like about it is that the giant dude's portrait is actually so large it actually doesn't fit. <laughs> That's kind of cool, I like that. Alright, finally, the last transformation here, number three, is a the highest level lightning badge, and a medium plus attack badge gives you the Cyclops. Pretty cool. Alright, next we have this guy here, very basic. Looking at transformation number three, three transformation badges plus two uh, physical attack badges gives you this guy. We saw this guy in the Kai Mountain as well. Alright, moving on, the Officer Demon. This guy is very important to my strategy, so hopefully you picked one up. Because I actually had to backtrack to Eante to get this guy. It was totally worth it. Alright, so transformation number one is the, well, what you see there. Transformation badge plus a medium level plus attack badge gives you that guy. We saw this guy before. Moving on, transformation number two. Uh, two transformation badges plus the medium level dark badge gives you this variant. Now, what's really cool about this variant is that it has a ton of magic attack for you to abuse. But not only that, it has 75 base uh, move speed. So this is ridiculous, ridiculously high. That's really, really high. So that's why I really like this guy. Alright. Last but not least is the Fairy Maid. Now I picked this holographic variant up in the Yorkai Mountains, I believe. And then when you pick up a card that has four corner slots, a message will pop up telling you how to do the level four transformations, which is the highest transformation you can have in this game. So basically, the level 4 transformation requires you to have 4 transformation badges in each corner of the card. So as you can see here, we have the large sunflower fairy and the level 4 is depicted by this red background. If you haven't noticed by now, the level transformation that you have on the card, it also is reflected by the coloured background that you see here. Alright, so the sunflower fairy is a little bit interesting because it has a lot of single target buffs. So it has weapon bless, armor bless, spell enhance, hyper trigger. That's a little bit neato. Okay, so that's all the transformations done. Let's take a look at my actual deck. The actual meaty part of this strategy. Okay. So first of all, uh, you can see here, I picked up a second prototype. I picked this guy up as I was hunting down the officer demon. So I figured might as well put in a second prototype because they're cool. Alright, so the main thing that you need to note here is that on each of my prototypes, I just have the minimum MP necessary to cast one evolution breath. So that's 32 MP, so you need at least 40 MP on your uh, dragon, uh, not dragon machines, the um, prototypes. More importantly, you also need to have a gal badge on each of these guys to make sure they go first in the um, first part of the battle. Alright, moving on, the Officer Demon. So I'm just boosting up its magic attack power as you can see here. Got a free inner line for maximum bonuses. I believe this gives me like plus 50 here. And this one here gives me plus 30. And then finally, to remove its light weakness, I put on, I put on the highest leveled light badge here. Alright, moving on, we have the Axe Lolly here. This is mostly to serve as backup in case something goes wrong. Not only that, it'll also make uh, taking down Suwaka when she's all by herself a lot faster. Alright, um, also note I have the Light Resistant badge on, as well as the Ice Resistance badge on. Again, as I said, it's mostly for backup purposes. Okay, now we have the Sylph. So for those of you who do not remember how to make a Sylph, it's made from this little squid guy here. So you need two um, transformation badges, the highest level lightning badge, and then this, whatever this badge is. Alright, boop. 
Okay, so once again, as you can see here, I boosted its magic attack power once again. And then finally, and most importantly, you really need to have the highest level ice resistor badge on this guy. Because you want this thing to not die. Very important. And finally, to round off my deck, I have the Dragon Knight dude here again. Once again, mostly to serve as backup. That's my last line of defense. As well as to take out Sawako when required. Okay. So here is the formula you need to defeat Suwako. You need a Lightning Damage Dealer. You need a Dark Damage Dealer. You need a Light Damage Dealer. And finally, you need an Ice Damage Dealer. Now you're probably wondering at this point, wait a minute, but you don't have an Ice Damage Dealer in your deck. That is an absolutely great observation, viewers at home. That is true. I do not have an Ice Damage Dealer. However, I did not show you who I chose as my master. That's my Ice Damage Dealer right there, people. My Marissa. Because she has access to the second level Ice Spell. She learns this like level 30 or something. But for some reason, I, even though I'm at level 60, she doesn't learn the second level Lightning and Fire Spells. And from what I've been told, she never actually learns those, so I'm very confused by that. Anywho, this bird here is a little bit annoying, it's weak to fire and can cast ice base attacks. So I'm taking a pretty big risk here, sending out my two prototypes first. But I'm banking on those two guys surviving before they get damaged too much. Because Evolution Breath, once again, HP based, high HP equals high damage. Alright, finally we have this guy here, we know what this guy does, it's weak to light attacks. So this is the most threatening guy, so we need to take it out first. That's why we brought along two prototypes, for the Evolution Breath. Alright, so I'm going to cast fire on the bird guy. Evolution Breath, Evolution Breath. This already has gone wrong. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, I think I'm going to reset this. Reset! Alright, take two. That, what the bird did there, was probably the worst possible case scenario, so that would screw, would screw you over completely. Alright, so let's try this again. Now, normally, the bird here has an attack that can um, disrupt anyone on the turn using magic uh, base attacks. So, yeah, there's that. So we took both of those out on the first turn, which is okay, I suppose. Okay, this is why you need an ice base attacker. This is a machine dragon. This is an upgraded version of the prototype. <laughs> so yeah, it also has evolution breath. So hopefully, if all goes well, it doesn't use evolution breath and my Marissa attacks the first. Because, as I mentioned before, evolution breath is a breath attack. It's highly dependent on its HP. So if we can go first, like so, this is actually perfect. So now, whatever it does, it's not going to harm me in any way, shape, or form. It actually died on the first turn. Wow. I really lucked out there. Okay, Sunflower Fairy. I'm going to summon my Officer Demon. I'm going to start casting Sub-Zero Cold on this guy. I'm going to blast it with this laser because it has Slayer effects. Why not? Okay. So this guy isn't that much of a problem. The only problem that can arise is that you have this guy plus another dangerous monster on the field at the same time, and it decides to buff up its magic attack or physical attack. That's the worst possible case scenario here. Anyway, I'm going to use this turn to summon my Sylph next, because I know what's coming up next. It's very important. Okay. So because of that, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to start manipulating for Dark here, so I'm going to use this full screen attack. Alright, let's do this, baby. Oh yeah. You be dead. Excellent. Alright, so what's coming up next? Okay, that's why you have the Ice Resistance badge on, because Suwako also has Sub-Zero Cold as well. Okay, this is the Dominion. It is a light base attacker, and it also has a full screen physical attack that hurts like hell. So this is why you need the Dark Base Attacker, which is why I have the Officer Demon here. So I'm going to use Sub-Zero Cold to add on additional damage. I'm going to use, I believe this is Demon Corridor, I believe that's what this this attack is called. It is the strongest single target dark attack this dude has. And then finally I'm going to single target this dude down with my Sylph for additional damage. Wow, 
That did quite a lot of damage, yo. And this is also the other reason why you don't want to use physical attackers in this fight, is because Sawako keeps freaking buffing everyone with her physical defense buff. Okay, so, this is why you need the Sylph. This variant of the Undine is very dangerous, it has uh, very powerful ice-based attacks that are magic-based, and are also full screen. So this is also why you need the Ice Resistance badge on your Sylph. That's the second reason. Okay, Officer Demon is still pretty tanky though, so it can take one of those magic spells at least. And also, its Demon Corridor attack still does quite a bit of da damage as you can see. So that should be the end of the Undine. She did not even get a turn, because she is very slow. Alright, so that is all said and done. That's all of our monsters defeated. Let's go take her out. Yo, I'm gonna poke you with my stick. Okay. So obviously, you're not going to have the same setup of cards that I will have. You may have different cards and whatnot. But as long as you follow the formula that you need one Ice Base Attacker, one Lightning Attacker, and Officer Demon, and be able to take on the first two monsters with your first two point monsters, you should be A-OK. -okay. I think the strategy works pretty well. Alright. So the um the axe lolly up there has a lot of physical blast attacks. And some of them may cause debuff. So let's take a look at those really quickly. That's a full screen blunt attack that can cause instant death. Uh, this can debuff physical capability, so that probably decreases physical attack and defense. This has high accuracy. This is a buff that increases the resistance against the free weapon types in the game. And this is a four screen blunt attack with no additional effects. Okay, so that's that done. Kablamo and Kablamo. Oh, just for your information, the Officer Demon that I have now, it also has two buffs. It has haste, and it has a buff that increases your evasion for your entire party. That's just for your information, I never actually use those, because they're not really that useful. Alrighty then, so that is the Suwako fight done. So aside from that mishap in the first take, that went pretty damn well. So I really like this strategy, mostly because it doesn't utilize Ramu. Because from what I've seen from other people playing this game, everyone uses Ramu because she is that good. So I'm really happy with this strategy that I found for Suwako because a lot of people find Suwako extremely difficult to take care of because they keep using Reimu. I mean, you have Marissa there for the ice attack, might as well use her too. Okay, so we have a transformation badge here and a regular physical attack badge. Well, that's okay, we have a transformation badge which is great because you cannot have enough of those since they're a limiting resource. And not only that, we have acquired the Suwako, so we are now the owners of the Maria Water Bottle Company. Hell yeah! Alright, so before we end the video here, let's take a quick look at the Suwako that we acquired. Here we are. Okay, so she has pretty good magic attack it seems. Pretty okay speed, has some nice magic defense, and you have a very good skill set. Okay, so this is heal, this is clearance, this is raise dead. I believe that's drill, so that's a physical attack that, that can decrease defense. It is pierce based. This is area heal, so that heals in a line. I don't know what that attack is, but it is physical based as well. This is refresh. Suwako has refresh. Oh my god, that is ridiculous. That's cold hand, so that's not really that great, but it's physical based ice damage. And she has Zub Zero Cold, so she can pretty much replace Marissa at this point in time. And finally, she has Mass Heal. Wow, she is really damn good. Alright then, cool. Good thing we acquired her. Alright, so that is the end of the video. For next time, we will be going to the Underground Palace because Ramu now has her sights set on expanding her corporation to a, on a worldwide scale. And in order to, to do that, she needs a financial backer. That's where Satori comes in because she is filthy, stinking rich. So we will see you guys next time, whenever that may be.